got this shit knocking though. And we are back, <laughs> fellas and ladies. <laughs> ladies. <laughs> we have two very special guests. Very. Very important. Very, because I'm on my Cali stuff now. Nothing. What? Nothing. Don't mind. <laughs> We're going to start over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. You have a Selena shirt on. I love it. Selena. You need to have a Selena. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Seriously. Okay. okay. Do you want to introduce yourselves? I'm Karis. My name Ferris. is Joshua Ferris. Karis Ferris. The boy yeah. with the, the, the voice that Mary Joshua Ferris. Joshua Ferris. <laughs> Joshua. You are now tuning in to the Joshua Why Ferris podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah, all righty, guys. Uh, so we're just going to be... Hit you with already, guys. Yeah, all righty, guys. Yeah, you know, right. it's the, that's to get the bad voice. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who don't know who y'all are, y'all are two photographers. But can y'all explain what type of photography, who y'all are more? Into debt, detail, all that. <laughs> you got it. Me? Yeah, let the people know. Okay, so we're wedding photographers um, who also do corporate and a lot of other stuff. I specialize in wedding lifestyle, anything having to do with love, babies, families, all that stuff. Um, we shoot weddings together, and he specializes in corporate events, concerts, headshots, um, all that good stuff. So we kind of started in college. He started the business. Um, in college, and then I kind of swooped in and um, elevated for sure, him. For sure, for sure. <laughs> take take cool. him there. Yeah, uh, started the business in college, and then we started dating, and she's just like a creative guru, right? So graphic design, website design, oh. all that. She was in school for actually fashion design, so yeah. uh, she was making dresses, making hair pieces, and selling them, and I'm like, I kind of like that. I like that. And <laughs> so, then, so she's the natural. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. She is a creative, like, to the heart. She's an artist. She's the artist, right? So um, we kind of joined forces. She helped me. And then it started with, like, helping me with posing and, you know, the engagement sessions and stuff like that. Definitely straight up rebranded my whole site, graphics, all of that. And then, hmm. um, yeah, and then so, but it got to a point where she was like, yeah, I kind of like how you do it, but that's not really how I would do it. And I was like, well, let me show you how to do it yourself then, right? So I started <laughs> teaching her how to shoot. Uh, she had shot some in high school, so she had the basics, but really just the technicalities of it and doing it at a high level. Um, fast forward a few years, we get married, we're doing it full time now, traveling the world and having fun, trying to raise our family. So what made you start doing photography? Man. Uh, money, 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 money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so entrepreneur at heart. My first gig was uh, opened up a barbershop in my dorm. I saved enough money to go buy my first camera from the pawn shop. But in my heart, my mom was the historian of like our family. So we always grew up with big old camcorders or pictures. And so uh, something that's really huge to me is leaving a legacy. And I don't think there's a better way than either leaving it through financially or through pictures and albums and stuff like that. That'll just be passed down from generation to generation. So we just always had pictures. So it's something that I love to do. And then I bought my camera. I was just walking around. You know that kid on campus who always had their camera? Yeah. That was me. And so. Then it started, hey, can you come take pictures of this party? Can you do my graduation sessions or anything like that? So that's just kind of how I just kept building. So sure. no what was your first camera? Nikon D3000 Kings. <laughs> Used. <laughs> Used. Are you still with Nikon? Oh, yeah. I just ain't never. Yes. Been with it. Do you have a Nikon now? 750s. Me too. Yes. Uh, I think it's one of the best cameras out there. 750? Yeah. If you're shooting in mass volume, for sure. Oh, yeah. If you're shooting portraits, I'd probably go to the 800, 850. But for us, 750 for sure. Yeah, if you're shooting a lot. I, I like it. It's yeah. like a good in between right there. So, what made you, well, you kind of told us what made yeah. you, but what, like, why did you stick with it pretty much? Um, I just felt like it was a great way to combine all the things that I love to do into one. Like a whole creator. Um, yeah, just a lot of things that I was interested in, I could combine with the final product of photography. So, like the fashion design, I could do style shoots, and then the posing, and people, and then the graphic design on the back end with editing. It was just kind of a good way to roll it all into like one, one thing. I don't know. 
because like usually like well from from what I've seen like when like how you were like oh well then you do it you know let me show you how to do it like a girl would just prove you wrong and then walk away like yes yeah, I told you I can do it yeah so, but you were like <laughs> you're like I'm gonna keep doing it yeah I was like no this is yeah I think it was yeah. a good outlet for you it was a good outlet it was a very good outlet and I think at the time uh, Baylor was a great school I love Baylor but the fashion design program there wasn't giving everything. Mm. I really needed, and so that was just an awesome outlet. Let's, let's be real. You're a Waco. <laughs> so just, she's yes. trying to be politically correct. Yes. <laughs> ain't that nice. I mean, there's yeah. only so much bedazzle you can put on cowboy boots. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. So, yeah, it was just, I mean, our first date, we went to Cameron Park in Waco and took pictures. <laughs> so I, had. So I, had was, I had no car. I had yeah. a scooter. We got on, she hopped on the scooter. You hear that, fellas? Took, took, took the camera, was like, well, let's go take some pictures. It was free. Free. <laughs> we went oh, and at the, uh, what, the Penland, the dorm, the dorm cafeteria. cafeteria. And that was free, too, because I had to hook up with the homeboy at Prince. Oh, I'm jealous. I like Jesus. Look at that guy. I know, that's like, the per- that's like perfect. Because, <laughs> so, the last person we had on, his his wife, when they met, she was, like, in, into marketing, right, Mrs. Yeah, West? Yeah, yeah. She was into marketing, so it was like, that kind of helped him out yeah, and, and sure. is you know if you know somebody in marketing the fact that they're together like yeah. specializes in marketing that just helps your photography Absolutely. stuff and Absolutely. how you're saying how you know her creativity like helped you know boost you up a little bit that's like that felt sure. yeah, sure. yeah i need that everybody dragging me down so uh like what made you guys really turn on the lights for uh, wedding photography? Wedding photography. Um, Because, I mean, I know you, that's what I know you as. I'm mm -hmm. sure Mike knows you. And that's pretty much what you guys put out there the most. So I'm wondering what made you guys say, hey, we're going to be wedding photographers. Gotcha. So I think what really got it, I'll just, in a broad perspective about it, Something that we're really passionate about is definitely family. We're passionate about marriage. Uh, we got married pretty young. Uh, not only that, but significance in our work, right? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest days of people's lives, you know? So um, if whatever work I'm doing, I want it to be significant. And so I think for us to combine our photography skills and all of that with a wedding day, I mean, to me, that just sounds like the perfect day, so. Yeah. For me, it was just, I just love pretty things. <laughs> and so the prettiest <laughs> thing that I could think to shoot was a wedding. And I think just as we get better and better in our wedding photography career and shoot better and better weddings, they just get prettier and prettier. And so I just enjoy, like, I don't know, I guess I'm a girl. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm just a girl. Like, I loved my wedding. I love being with brides on their wedding day yeah. and, like, just having – just a close inside view and being able to capture that moment for them. I don't know. I just love, I guess it's just a girly thing for me. I just like shooting weddings. Yeah, see, all that freaks me out. <laughs> all that just freaks me out. Just, like, I like weddings, but just like, if I mess up, she yeah. will kill me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why I leave it all to them. Yeah. <laughs> so when people book you, are they booking you all together? Or is it like, oh, they book him and you tag, you come along? Or is it like they book you and you come along? Or is it like, yeah, hey, like, I'm not. Happened? We specifically want you two guys. Because I know right yes. now it's you guys are at a point where it's a studio thing. So they have associate photographers. Yeah. For instance, like if um, I ever got my name big and bad. Uh, it is big and bad, though. Uh, it is a bad uh, name. name. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. <laughs> but, uh. When you have associate photographers, essentially you're telling the people you're going to still get the same aesthetic, same feel. It's just not us. Mm. Um, what okay. some guys do is that they'll discount the wedding because they'll say, oh, if you book me, it's $1 million. But since it's my associate photographer, it'll be 750000 versus, <laughs> hey, crazy. I'm just... speaking oh, into existence. Hey, hey. Speak <laughs> that. <laughs> so... That's essentially what they're doing. And from my understanding, you guys are at that point where you guys do have associate photographers. Definitely. Yeah. So how often when you do weddings are people saying, yeah, that's cool that you got Bobby working for you and everything. And I know it might be a little discount or maybe you can't guys, you know, can, can y'all figure out a date for me or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So how often does that happen with you guys now? Um, I would say that, I don't know, maybe like 60% of our weddings we shoot um, because when people initially email us, we send them us. And so if they come back and they're like, oh, our budget doesn't allow for that, 
we say, don't worry about it. We have a solution for you. We'll send you our associates. And so a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, like that's great. Because mm -hmm. they wanted us initially. Want yeah, they wanted us initially. And then they realized, oh, maybe I can't afford you, but I can still have the look. And so um, I would say most of the time, it's us. Um, we do have like different collections in there, like our top two, you're guaranteed both Josh and I. And then um, still us, you may be guaranteed me and a second shooter or Josh and a second shooter. So that way, you know, if we have two weddings on the same day, we can both shoot it. You know, he goes some one place, I go another, and then we have our seconds. It's just kind of depending on like the collection that you get and all that. So we have lots of different. See oh, there, that's that's interesting. Man, yeah, that's like yeah. <laughs> y'all just taking over the market. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do y'all choose y'all as associates though? Like how how like how do you put that trust into somebody that like okay y'all have a brand, brand yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I sure. it, like I know they can go out there and do that because that's I mean I can only imagine it's hard to find definitely. Um, yeah. But we have the best associates and we haven't had yeah, any really problems. So praise God for that. But yeah, um, the associates either come through. Uh, people who have come through our coaching sessions, who, mm -hmm. people who we've trained and taught to take on a wedding day the same way we would, or either peers that we've looked up to or seen like, man, they do some great work. Let me see how their professionalism is and all of that. And if we can get on the same terms with that, then yeah, let's, if we can make, you know, come to an agreement, yeah. we can make that happen. Yeah. And a lot of times associates are really all the time. Um, if they're like new on, we'll have them second shoot with us first exactly. before we like send them out on their own to do a wedding just because we want to make sure that they're seeing how we operate, exactly. seeing how we interact with the bride and the groom and how we just tackle the day. Absolutely. Did Mike just put in a soft application? You fired from my Take a seat. I'll let me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's because uh, like I, can't, I mean, just. We're, like I said, work, working with him, I know coming just in general, just even in regular nine to five mm -hmm. worlds, coming across somebody to, like I said, to rely on, I know that's that's it's difficult. Tough, yeah, 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 that, that is tough. tough. So we've had to like, while we've been in shooting in Jamaica, go, stuff going on and you, you know, it's like, okay, you're on the way. So as long as there's open communication, I'm sending the, my shooters, they have everything in advance. They know exactly where they should be, everything that should be going on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is just a preparation. And these are shooters just like us. They have a gift, you know what I yeah. mean? So we're not just choosing anybody. but So they know how to shoot for sure, but it's just things that we were, is this the professionalism? You know, those type of uh, intangibles that separate us, I believe, making sure that they get it as well. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no CPT. Some of our viewers have no idea what that is. <laughs> no, I mean, I would really say I think that what what has made us as successful as we are, and I don't mean that in the, like, we're so big kind of way, but I am, like, creative Modest. in every sense of the word. Like, I'm late to everything. I I do things when I feel like doing them. Like, it's just, yeah, I can get bad, like, in my creative bubble. But he is, like, a business person. Like, he is, like, processes systems. PDFs, spreadsheets, like everybody's gonna know when and where to be places. And so I think that combining that has really pushed us forward. But it, sure. then it also is a huge deal in helping us just with our associates too, like just the business practices and making sure that everybody who we're with is professional. But then also I choose some of the associates as well, just like seeing, being able to yeah. see people's, uh, see other people's creativity. She, just, uh, she sees a, a lot of potential in a lot of our seconds, for sure. Yeah, okay. so I don't know. It's It's been a joint effort, for sure. For those, and I don't know if you know Fred, but I got my degree in mechanical engineering. I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so did you ever get into the corporate world? Or did yeah. you? Yeah, I was there for about five years. So I, I love to ask everybody, because mm -hmm. we all pretty much come from like a corporate background. Yeah, for sure. and, Take that leap of pa you know, I'm gonna follow my passion and all I that. I was forced. You were forced. Nobody got fired. Oh. Uh, quit slash fire. Okay. It was like, uh, it was like you, we know you don't want to be here, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's and I was like, all right. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> what was the sign, and where were you in life before? Like, what was like, hey man, I can't be here anymore, or was it a business is booming? I'm making more money out here doing my thing. What, what, what yeah. was it? Um, at the bottom of it was making sure first I could take care of my family for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so graduated college 2012. Right after that, went to work for NASA out in Clear Lake. Okay. I was there for about two years. 
and then I went to work for uh, Miss Eyes Oil and Gas Company, in Houston. Uh, I was there for about what two and a half, Something like that. three, whatever we call it, three. Um, and that's when I quit. But that that last year was really hard because wow. it was rough. Yeah, but I was taken off, and I was like, I didn't use all my vacation PTOs to go shoot, you know. And then it turned into, hey guys, I'm not coming to work today. Don't worry about paying me. It's okay. I just, I can't come today. And it was a lot of that. And it's like, hey, can I work remotely? Or hey, can I, you know, and they were just like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so push came shove, I finished a couple of projects and then, and then they, you know, and it was like, it's time to go because I was taking off way too much. And then my goal was to make sure that the photography could supplement the engineering income. So once that happened, and uh, once I also, well, we also had, we knew we had a couple of big things coming up that year that I would definitely have to be for, and we wanted to put all of our resources and time and energy into that. So it was just time. So that's how that came. It wasn't a, I don't have a plan. It was like, I had been wanting to quit for probably like two, two years. years. <laughs> you know, every day coming home, oh, I'm tired. And you I'm know. like, quit? Why are you there? Just quit. Like, I mean, almost every day you come home tired, I was like, quit. We'll be yeah. all right. Just quit. Did that for a while. The whole waking <laughs> up early, going to work, coming back, yeah. editing, staying up all night, you know. So yeah. Where were you working at the time? I was full-time photography. Oh. So oh. coming out of school, I got my MRS degree. I got my ring, and I was okay. like, okay. She uh, took the Mark Zuckerberg yeah. route. Yeah. School, <laughs> school is just not for me. I just, uh, it's just not for me. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> but you, you said funny. you did get your degree. No, I got my MRS, my Mrs. Mrs. Degree. degree. Oh, yes. so you didn't complete? Oh, no, great. I did not. Oh, no, I no. did not. I did not. After Baylor, we got in. We got engaged, we got engaged. after I graduated. Yes. Then she moved to Houston. She did a little time up at U of H. Yeah, a little time. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hold on. Hold on. She out here doing this shit. What is she Oh, God, so, so the photography money really came from dope money. <laughs> Y'all really <laughs> mad up. Y'all really <laughs> laundering something. Y'all got some whole laundering You thing. got it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I did, I did some, some time at U of H. Um, and then I worked for some family just doing, like, administrative work. I think I did that for, like, six months. Um, and then it was like. Then we had our first kid. Yeah, no, I got time. pregnant yeah. when I, I got pregnant. Yeah. And then it was oh, like, all right. She's a cutie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my baby. Um, but yeah, no, I got I got pregnant, and we just had a conversation. Like, all right, we'll just quit your job, do this full time. Let's put our all into it. And so, yeah, I just just started from there. So that was I don't know when that was. I'm trying to think of like the the days 14, and the years. Twenty fourteen. Yeah, he quit at the end of twenty sixteen. So I was being I had been full time for I think almost two years um, when he quit, and so I was just. Yeah, she was really yeah. holding, making, keeping everything holding up. Down. Yeah, yeah, really holding it down for sure. Uh, P.O.P. Holding it down. No, no. <laughs> no, she was really making it happen for sure and uh, couldn't be anywhere we are today without that sacrifice that she made. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. 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 Don't go find me a girlfriend. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wife. Wife. It's a big difference. Yeah. Well, you gotta start. You gotta start somewhere. I ended up going to propose. You like? Because you know, as his girlfriend, when I was at U of well, I mean, I was his fiance at that point. But when I was at U of H, he was paying me to book, so I would get like a commission oh, yeah. fee. Oh, I thought you were saying he was paying you to be his girlfriend. No. <laughs> I was saying, whoa. No, no, no I would get like a commission fee based off of what I booked, okay. like what package I booked. So I would sit down with clients, you know, and that was kind of like, because I, I was actually yeah. gonna quit when I was at NASA. I was gonna quit, and I was like, it's too much. I'm, yeah. I'm doing, you know, quit photography. Yeah, quit yeah. photography. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah. she was like, no, don't quit. I'll yeah. help you out. So she started helping with the booking, like my emails, and you know, let me know when I have, uh, I'm about to say a show. A shoot. shoot and then um yeah and then it turned in okay well you're good so every wedding you book me i'll pay you this much or if you do this you know so that's how i really yeah. kept the ball rolling and then it turned into okay well this is i'm laying down i gotta pay you no more, like, so, yeah, married, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so within the first three years you were at nasa correct mm -hmm. how many bookings were you getting to where you felt like man i'm overwhelmed we were on the road, man. I don't even know. Like, probably that was around like the maybe 15 to 20 ish. Yeah. I think a I think year. You know, weddings 15 to 20. Yeah, 15. That one, I mean, but think well, about but it. We started it. Yeah. Oh. He started it in college. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's hard to determine what the real first year is because he was shooting 50, you know, graduation sessions yeah. for $50 for three hours long. Woo! 
sorry, three hour long, you know, graduation <laughs> sessions for fifty dollars and you know, was that his first year? Like, it, would you count that? So it's kind of hard to determine what first year. But, but I'd say when you guys started really rolling into weddings. Your first year was like fifteen weddings. Okay, so first maybe twelve to. I wouldn't say that my first year. I mean, what, one maybe. Oh, I mean, I mean okay. my very. I mean, you weren't very first one. Yeah. Like it was actually two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to say very, but then like it started really kind of growing the after ball that. rolled yeah. fast yeah i would say that it did roll fast do you guys mind me asking how many weddings are y'all doing a year now including like, associates yeah how much is, it's like how many is the studio doing and how many are y'all doing i'd say we're doing close to maybe 27 or 28 in the studio i don't know you you would know Total more than me 35 studio. yeah we got two no, kids. No, 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 we just no. bought a house and renovated it. <laughs> we, we got students. We both went to Baylor. I thought you were going to pay us for this. <laughs> God, Baylor is. Uh, we was there at the peak time. Boy, RG3 we were there when, you know, when it was, was good to be there. Yeah, when it was good to be there, we were there. But we're still talking about 20 grand you know, yeah. you know, and it's worse a year. It's, it's, it's worse now. I don't, know, I don't remember when, but it's worse now. So during it's, those college, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. It's like 150 go there for four years? More? I mean, a little bit I, more yeah, now. Sure. I don't know what it is now, but yeah. I, think it's, I think it's higher, yeah, yeah. for sure. I couldn't even do UHD, so I'm not Switch. even thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I went to UHD, I was like, nah, good, good. good. <laughs> these prices for these classes? <laughs> no. Sure, I'm gonna get a job. <laughs> I mean, but I will say, it's so many intangibles. Just, oh, and I think definitely. about it every day. Like, should I really have went there? Should I have gone to college? Should I? And the answer I, I always come back to is yes, because if so, wouldn't have met her, wouldn't have gotten the networks that I am it's in. You the know, there's so many. Too. That's what my, that's what I wanted to ask y'all. So like. Go through college, like a lot of people y'all met, did y'all get a lot of weddings through? Yeah, through that, was, that? that was how that was started, and that was the yeah. launching pad of our business. Because think about it, like you said, it's Waco. Waco is the center of uh, Texas. Not a lot of people yeah. people go there, but then they leave, right? So we all went there, got my name in the mix on campus and in the mm -hmm. city, mm -hmm. and everybody left. But people left to Colorado, people left to Dallas, people left mm -hmm. to Houston, people left to California, mm -hmm. and so. When they left, so did my name, and that's how we were able to just kind of travel yeah. and network. And I love how passionate he is about his name. It holds value, yeah. 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 No, nah, because I mean that's one thing I do regret. Even though I hated college as just the whole thing about it, but I didn't communicate with people. I didn't network. I just literally would like go to class, skip class, go play basketball, mm -hmm. stay in the gym the whole time, and just go home. And it's yeah. like, damn. I really didn't have any friends in college. Yeah. It's like I had no network. Like, yeah. yeah, all the girls were chasing me every day, so <laughs> I just had to go. That was what I was thinking in my mind, but uh, I just went to football practice. They're really, really, <laughs> they really run the class. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, so, have you guys ever considered uh, getting a like a, a space or anything like that? Because I know you guys, a lot of people operate studios, you know, online and things like that. Have y'all ever considered? Because I. I the common denominator for a lot of people is once they get a space mm -hmm. and they design it out, your volume of weddings increases. Have y'all ever considered that? Yeah, so we've Absolutely. thought about it. Um, we're based out in Dallas right now. There's a little spot. Y'all in Houston? We were in Houston. We moved to Dallas in the What's exact going on in Dallas? Huh? What's going on in Dallas? Answer the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she got a lot of family. Okay. Anyways, yeah. but there is a location there, and uh, we've thought about it before, but it really wasn't financially the right time or just in the business. But now, as we're trying to move into uh, being educators, teachers uh, to the other photographers in the industry, we are creating a lot more video content. So we need a spot to create that video content. Mm -hmm. We need a spot to host workshops. We need a spot to shoot products that I shoot a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. So. Th it, as the business grows, the need and the demand for it is growing a little bit more. Um, but as far as using it to shoot a lot out of, not necessarily, right? 
would you say? Yeah, not necessarily. I think we're definitely, to answer your question, we're definitely considering a space and just knowing that that would help us a lot in the future endeavors that we're planning for. And so, yeah, I mean, I would say that it's definitely something that we're heavily considering right now. So it would kind of like be more of like of a workspace, yeah, essentially, not really like a studio. Just well, workspace slash studio. studio. It would be studio, but not, not. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm gonna sit here all day in a studio. Yeah. And models or whatever. It's mm -hmm. a studio to rent out. It's this is it's just a business it, opportunity. I, I'm never here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. For the exactly. Yeah. And so, I shoot some stuff here and there, and I'm out. And because we most of our stuff is on location uh, uh -huh. or we're traveling, it doesn't. We wouldn't necessarily work out in the studio all the time, but. Like I said, it's just a business opportunity. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people don't know that we do take intermissions, so breaks, I'm giving you off stuff. But you were talking about um, in the intermission, you were saying mm -hmm. your ideal business is make a bunch of money, per, not make a bunch of money, but you pay handsomely per wedding versus shooting a bunch of weddings. Like, yes. Quantity over quality. Yes, yes, absolutely. My end goal is to shoot like 12 weddings a year and basically like I sit down and have, for lack of a better word, an interview with the bride and like I tell you whether or not like I'm gonna shoot your wedding. Like that is in my dream world, you know, cause I mean, I have kids, I wanna be a mom, you know, but I still want to be creative and have that outlet. And photography is awesome, but like there are a lot of other things I wanna do as well. Like originally my major was fashion design and I still like doing that. I make clothes for Ellie and myself all the time. And so, you know, finding a way to still do what I love photography, but then also have other business ventures as well is the end goal. And so yeah, 12 a year charge, who knows what for those 12 a year and then be able to like choose which 12 I'm doing is really yeah, I love to give people perspective. There's a guy that I follow. His name is uh, Duke Images, and from my understanding, the dude's making like minimum twelve grand a wedding. It's possible. So, oh, yeah. uh, and I've listened to some other podcasts where the guy was making twenty thousand a wedding. Possible. Yeah, I've definitely yeah, no, I've heard those. So that's yeah. A lot of a lot of guys who don't do weddings say they hate weddings, or a lot of guys who shoot and they don't know the pricing and things like that. I mean. They're out There's, there. It's, it's yeah, out there. Absolutely. Can, it can be done. Um, so you said you're very like business minded and everything like mm -hmm. that. We have a lot of listeners that are just starting or mm -hmm. kind of flowing into what they're doing. How did you come up with pricing and then uh, answer the pricing and then we'll roll into because the next question I wanted to ask, like, do you guys have a budget and how do you develop a budget for a business? Definitely. OK. Um, how do we develop our pricing? pricing? Yeah. Um, it started with knowing And you don't have to expenses. give us exact numbers, yeah. but just no, give yeah, the yeah, process. Yeah. yeah, the principle is um, when you come up with your pricing, you need to know your expenses first to make sure you're covering those. And then you can get determined with that. This is the beauty of our entrepreneurship. You can determine how much you make, right? And then the people are either going to tell you yes or no, but it's your job to figure out how to get that value of that product and get somebody to believe and trust in you yeah. and you service them uh, with your photography or your gift. But when it came down to figuring out that pricing, uh, first thing, knowing your expenses. Second, determining how much you want to make. And then three, determining how hard you want to work, really, because how hard you work will uh, let you or determine how much you can charge. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to work, if I wanted to shoot, like for her 12 weddings a year, that's one wedding a month, and if her expenses are 100000 well, you do the math. And if you want to make, you know, if, if, yeah. if we just broke it down like that and then added all the details in of, well, this is going to cost this much. Well, the car, the, the, all of those all of those expenses, add those up, then now determine what you want your profit to be, how much you want to make, what you feel comfortable with, what you think you're worth, and then you go from there. Okay. okay. And then how do you develop a budget for uh, your business? Like... Because a lot of people don't understand that you do need money for promotions. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming you guys promote. Um, there's things that you can mainstream, automate, and pay for those things. So how mm -hmm. do you develop a budget in a sense? Or where's the core of developing that? Where would you say that? that um, I'd say with us, developing a budget always starts in faith. Mm -hmm. um, so I can say, well, I know I want to make this much this year, right? In faith, I can say, okay, that's what we're working towards. And I want to uh, assign this much towards new gear, this much towards, just like anything. You, the budget isn't necessarily the facts or what it is. It's just your plan. It's just a plan. Um, so 
was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, so how do you like start the budget? How do you like build one up? Things like that. For me, uh, essentially, what I said is, I wanted to spend uh, ten percent of what I make a year on promotions. Mm. Um, I, I wanted to keep my insurance under five percent mm -hmm. of what I make Definitely. for the year. Gotcha, 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 um, gotcha. So, I mean, I have my perspective. Mm -hmm. I was asking you yours. Yeah. I, I feel, okay, so I may not be as strict or as stringent with, like, you know, saying, okay, the, the rule is you shouldn't spend more than 10% on marketing and advertising. You shouldn't spend, yeah, so when that comes, at the beginning of the year, we'll make a budget. We'll sit down with our accountant, sit down with our CP and all that and say, okay, this is what we did last year. This is what we're projecting to do this year. Let's build it on the projection. And it may not always get there. It may not always be right, but that's how... We operate our how we will make our budget saying okay we want to make this much this is how much should go towards this 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 but things always come yeah, up things life. always come up it's so, called life yeah <laughs> <laughs> but in is life bad ways like maybe a wreck but also maybe an opportunity you right so it's hey i got this opportunity to shoot this gig but i know i need like one of our first i don't know kind of like faith things when it came to the budget was our lighting system right remember mm. i was like oh yeah we really need these lights and she was like yeah we really don't like... need to spend that much <laughs> but i'll pro photo right pro photos yeah Jeez. so um, a car exactly. in other words. <laughs> but those I was like what kind of lights are these? <laughs> can i live in these lights <laughs> but it worked out and so putting that into the budget first and then it kind of elevated us to be able to shoot certain things to yeah. give us a certain style and all that type of stuff so i hope i answered your question no you did and then uh i, I love how you mentioned faith and you know could you expand on that? Like, what do you mean by having faith in expanding and, and continuing you, business? That's like everything. Go, you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, faith is intertwined with literally everything, everything that we do. We have. I don't understand how uh, entrepreneurs or people who take risks like what are they? What are they betting on? You know, are they betting on themselves? Or we choose to bet on Jesus. You know, and so every time we elevate in our business we doubled down. I just feel like we're doubling down. You know, I was uh, kind of, talk, we were talking to her about it the other day, but it's just like playing Russian roulette. You know, I done been at the board and it's been red, 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 red. Well, what are you supposed to do is keep doubling down, keep doubling down, because you know it's, uh, eventually it's going to hit black. Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah, hit yeah. black. And so that's what we do. And uh, each each step we take, whether it's, hey, do we want to go in this direction? Do we want to expand here? Well, yeah, it's going to cost some money. It's going to take some risk, but God got our back, you know. I'm, I'm putting my money on God. I'm doubling down on God, right? So yeah, and they're not blind risks. It's absolutely. prayerful, patient decisions. Calculated, strategic. calculated, strategic. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a decision that we make that's not talked about, prayed about. You know, I mean, every yeah. Oh no, I mean, like I don't share the story. Like if you know me one on one, and I don't mind sharing it here. I was at a crossroads and I was like, God, I literally got on my knees and prayed about it. I said, mm -hmm. God, you, for me to continue to do photography, you're going to have to make this Something. very obvious. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those in the gray kind of guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And literally that year, was, after that was my best year of photography. For sure. Because I was like, all right, I got my degree and I, I, I'm certified. I can go teach and things like that. So am I going to teach? And then whatever I can get with photography, get it, or am I gonna do photography for yeah. real, for real? And like you said, and then I, you know, I based everything around yeah, that, yeah. you know, looked at the finances, I bought all my equipment, and things were just rolling, 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 rolling. So I love the fact that you, you know, you touched upon that and you implemented that, because a lot of people, you know, don't realize, you know, but what, depending on what religion you are, you, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna yeah. have to pray to somebody. You're gonna, you're gonna need, need some help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have faith in somebody or something. something. Yeah, you're gonna need some help. So, uh, so you said one thing that's really just like burning in my brain right now. So, like how you were saying how when clients come up to you, you want to be the one that's like interviewing them and saying, "Oh no, I don't want to shoot that," or "Yeah, I want to shoot that." Yeah. Like I think as creatives, like we forget. <laughs> the power that we have like we're we're the ones selling you, selling you something pretty much sure. and i think we forget that because we get so excited when somebody's like yeah i want you yeah, we're yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> just give me two dollars yeah. or it's just like you know we're trying to reach out to everybody and get something or do something and like i i'm not sure what you if you have a plan but if you do could you mind sharing like what like what do you think the steps are to get 
for us to get to that point, for any, any creative, whether it be in photography, fashion design, whatever it is, to be like, hey, I'm good at this. Like, yeah. you want me. I don't, you know, I don't need you. I, I don't want you. Like, what do you think, as creators, we would have to take to, like, yeah, you know, be, in, con- be in control, pretty to be much. In control. Um, I think... I think a lot of it has to do with being humble. And what I've learned from my grandfather is being humble is having, it's not, you know, thinking too lowly of yourself and it's not thinking of too highly of yourself either. It's having an accurate view of where you are at the time. And so I think like when Josh started and he was charging $50 and doing three hour sessions and giving people like hundreds of edited photos for a graduation session, like that was where he was at at the yeah. time. And so it, it took me to come along and be like, you need to up your prices on this, you know, and to say like, hey, you're, you're better than this, like you can up your prices. And so I think that, you know, where we are right now, like it's just been a continual like reevaluation every year. We just reevaluate ourselves and say like, okay, we need to go up on our pricing mm-hmm. or, you know, this can stay the same where it is based on what we've done the year before. And so I think pricing dictates a lot of who you shoot because, you know, where our pricing is, like there are certain weddings who can't afford our prices. And I'm not saying that those weddings are bad weddings or anything like that, but where we are right now, I don't necessarily want to shoot those weddings anymore. And not to say, because like, again, not to say, you know, one wedding is, Better, better than, than the better. other yeah, in we terms can still of the service point. you with our associates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, not to say that one wedding is better than the other, but in terms of like my gifting and how I want to use that creatively, I know that my pricing will dictate certain yeah. levels of a wedding that I know that I want to shoot. And so I think that every year during our kind of reevaluation process is where we reevaluate, you know, humbly where we're at and determine our pricing, which gives us the next level of what we want to be shooting. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. It does. It does. Because I mean, the, and the reason I, the reason it stuck with me is because unfortunately, like I've been in those positions where it's like I need that client more than they probably need mm-hmm. me. But it's just like I'm in a tough position. I got bills. I got this. I got yeah. that. So they're like, hey, you know, we want you for two hours for a hundred dollars. And for some people, oh, it's not bad. But it's like for me, like hundred dollars. Yeah. But damn, yeah. I kind of need it right now. Yeah. You know, I need well, to eat. And you know, we we, we do, do we've done yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have and. Honestly, we did that yesterday. We still so do. No, we we real. still do it. No, we still do that. I, I think we 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 talk about it and determine like is this going to benefit us? You know more than the money. Mm-hmm. Is, I, I, just yeah, you help me out. What I'm trying to say. So right. You have to do some things to elevate yourself, yeah. right? So whether it's working with that specific planner, that promotional guy, the artist, whatever. There are certain things that you may not get paid for but we'll pay dividends in absolutely, the long Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like, we did a celebrity wedding, and you would think that the budget would be, woo, like we'd be living large. No, no, no. Not that's not how, a lot of the times, like, that's not how that works. Like, people think celebrity weddings, some celebrity weddings are paying out the wazoo, and a lot of times they're not. You know, they use their celebrity as... Leverage. Leverage, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so you have to take that into consideration and say, like, okay, is this going to pay dividends later? And so we've done that plenty of times where we say, okay, what's your budget? All right, we'll take it. Because we know that the dividends of what it pays off later in terms the of validation that it gives the you. validation and all of that will get you into the weddings that, that you really want will to pay do. for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So they said uh, celebrity. So who's a celeb that you uh, – Besides, I'm a, <laughs> oh. just that. <laughs> I was trying to like throw a slug at him too. No, but you guys shot Ray J's wedding, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that, the image is beautiful. Thank you. So, how was that, and how did that happen? It was it was fun. I'll say it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a crazy day. Yeah. It was one of those days where. You working your butt off all yeah. day. A lot of unexpected twists and turns. I think it was turns. like 14 hours yeah. total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You were great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. They were really cool people. Um, mm-hmm. Ray J and Princess, they just had their baby. Shout out to them. But uh, yeah, uh, we got in through that through the planner. And we got through that planner by doing free stuff for the planner before she knew who, you know what I mean? So it was mm-hmm. those little planting seeds. I definitely believe in planting seeds, reaping what you sow, and all that. And uh, so... How did we get there? Through the planner who we've done work for before. Uh, the planner was Daryl Wilson along with Diane Valentine. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so they showed Ray J and Princess a few options of photographers. They happened to pick ours and we came to an agreement and 
a shot in the cap. So yeah. when you get that call, text, email, with, like saying, oh, hey, Ray J wants to. A lot of the times we don't know who it is at first. Um, yeah, the it, they'll say celebrity. Yeah. So we have a pending one right now. And about we, don't, we have two pendings and we don't know who. Don't know who Justin Bieber just got engaged. So the chance. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. 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 I'm gonna say this on the record. I'm gonna say this on the record. When I saw that Chance the Rapper got engaged, I told Josh, "All right, for the next few months, I'm gonna be on my knees in prayer because I want to shoot that wedding." Speak that into. Yeah. I'm pray so I'm that speaking, into existence. I'm speaking that into existence right now, and I'm praying that into existence that. Can I second shoot? <laughs> nah. You, you were, they already gonna do it together. <laughs> Can I hold bags? <laughs> Can I bring y'all water? Can I wipe the sweat off your face? Really? Like the celebrity? I'm sure it'll work out. Good job. Good job. Just be his hype man. Give him, give him. No, I'm just praying. I'm praying that into existence. Hey, baby, do it. I'm going to stop you. But anyway, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. Now, I am a fan and I do keep up with you guys' work. And I saw there was an image of you guys being in the room with Michelle Obama. Lord have mercy. (laughs) We want to know about that. How was that? It was incredible because she is, she's just incredible. She's, I don't even, I'm speechless. You have to go. (laughs) (laughs) She demands. She demands. You know what I mean? I mean, not only because. You know, security has to clear out the whole room when she walks through. Yeah. But just yeah. she's so graceful. You know what I mean? Walking in just like an angel. She's not short at all. She is she's no, she, you know, she is like a goddess. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. After her. But anyway, yes. <laughs> no, this is for me. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Speak the truth, man. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So that was really cool. It was a high, I want to say stressful, but it's just one of those moments where I, I thrive on the, the break. Like game time, fourth quarter, I'm in there. You I know like what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. So... When it's that type of day and it's like nothing can go wrong, I'm 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 literally like jacked and I'm just like, let's go, let's go. And she's like, calm down, you know. So <laughs> yeah, he gets really excited and I'm like, just chill. Like, I'm, I'm excited right now, but <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that day was cool. The the bride and groom, Kristen and Sean, they were super so nice. Uh, she yeah. was the first aide to mm-hmm. Michelle, and then he was Security. secret service. Yeah, secret so, service. Secret that so oh, they were just so you know they Secret were just in there person. and yeah. she was there yeah. i mean it was a good day it was happy yeah. it was just a bunch of the cool struggle people. for me the struggle for me in that situation in any situation with a celebrity and it's not really a struggle i feel like i've got it gotten it down to a science is making sure that the bride feels like a bride mm-hmm. like if she's a celebrity whatever like i don't want a fangirl and not in a I don't want a fangirl over you type of way but like in a you're just a person getting married like it's your day and it's about you and you know and so especially with Michelle Obama in the room it, it yeah. took <laughs> everything I had to like not take pictures of her the whole time like like if, like if just like continuing to focus on the bride who was getting her makeup done and like not That's worry crazy. about like the first lady who <laughs> just walked into the room but I will say that right before she left the reception she was walking past me and she put her hand on my shoulder. She touched and me! She touched me! <laughs> <laughs> and she smiled at me. And I just, and in that moment, the only thing I could think of, where's Josh? Please, please get a picture of this. Please. And he was like, taking Mark a picture of the room. group. Right, and he was taking a picture of the group, which is what he was supposed to be doing. But that was like the one time I was like, you couldn't have been taking a picture of the first lady? Touching my shoulder? But no, it was amazing. And she was amazing. Wow. So, yeah. so I didn't, so I was in the same world. So during South by Southwest, I did. She was doing a panel, and mm-hmm. I was. I had got an email that I was able to shoot the panel. Mm-hmm. So they had us super far at first, and there's this Getty photographer with his 400 millimeter yeah, lens yeah. just snapping away. I'm like, Ugh. so I got this 70. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude, he's just so like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I got my 7200. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, can't, I can't even. I can barely even reach her. <laughs> so they end up saying we're gonna take a few of y'all to the front. Y'all pretty much have five seconds to get photos. Mm. So I'm like, yeah. so. I just pushed that guy photographer out the way. He's trying to get this, you know, big, big old, old yeah, yeah. lens on the house. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm literally just kind of like shoving people out the way. And even though it's Michelle Obama, so it was Michelle Obama, Queen Latifah, and Missy Elliott. Mm-hmm. And you have a photo of all three of them? Yeah. Not, to, really? not together, but I, have, I do have individual yeah. photos. Actually, I do have all three. I have, I have the whole panel together. Well, you should have that printed. Maybe. <laughs> okay. sorry, story. And there's a, I think there was a one more lady. I think she was from Law and Order. But one of the things I did, even though I did get like a few photos of Michelle Obama, they weren't nothing like super crazy. She was like smiling, laughing, yeah. ca- very candid photos. Yeah. Uh, one of the, 
I didn't get nothing good of Queen Latifah because I got so caught up in the moment of Michelle Obama. And like, I don't know why this to this day, it, it's kind Mess of still, yeah, but I was like, yeah. I didn't get nothing of Queen because I was always a fan of Queen Latifah, yeah, like, growing gotcha, up. Gotcha, gotcha. And that, because of what you said about you had to focus on the, on the, on the, on the bride and you couldn't fan out, like, first ladies right there. Mm -hmm. I fanned out. <laughs> yeah, I fanned out. And I don't regret it, but I do regret it, because yeah. I, I do like Queen Latifah and everything y'all yeah. are saying about it is, like, it's true, like, she's so powerful. Yeah. So she demanded that panel and the whole security crap we had to go yeah, through yeah. just to even yeah. get in that room yeah. was, like, yeah. insane. Like, yeah. I, what, what all did they do to y'all? Oh, background, background checks. checks all that. Like, uh, before we got in, they checked our bags. It was like bags. a club. Like, you got padded. You got no bags, no cameras, no nothing. Like, it was like you was going up into... Oh, yeah. Like, know, they opened like, our bag. They were scanning everything, taking like, it like apart a, to make sure it was actually it was the, a camera. Like the airport. Like you know the airport? Yeah. Like no, all worse than my, the airport. Yeah, 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 yeah it was. It was. It was, it was a cough. For us. Spread them. All of us had to leave our bags, and this, her team or security took our bags to another room. We had to go up the escalators. We got padded down. If you had a computer, you had to take the computer with you. They took their computers to a separate room. I don't know. I don't what know they what they did. Doing, I don't have no idea what they did. But all our when they gave us our bags back, everything was just open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like everywhere. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, here, fix yeah. it. I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. what do you what do you say? I don't want to shoot up much Obama. Obama. <laughs> right. So it was yeah. like, yeah, uh, pieces of that. That morning are kind of blurry because I don't know what they did to me. But. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say, like, too, just on another kind of related note, just when shooting a celebrity or a celebrity wedding or anything like that, I don't, I don't come from a family of like celebrities. I wouldn't say that, but I, a lot of my family is in the public eye and it's influential. And I noticed when I'm with them, it's so exhausting. Like when people come up mm -hmm. to you at dinner or like when somebody fangirls, and not to say that that's a horrible thing mm -hmm. or not to do that. But it, it can be like disruptive a little mm -hmm. bit, and so. No, y'all come fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm not talking about me personally. Just like some of my family members, and so when I'm shooting, even if what I'm doing is just giving them like a little bit more peace of mind, like that somebody else isn't coming up and being like, "Oh my gosh, I love you," like I love your work, or something mm -hmm. like that. I just know by not doing that is giving them a little bit more mm -hmm. of peace of mind on a day that they shouldn't have to be thinking about somebody coming up to them and, yeah. you know, whatever. But I don't know. That's just when shooting, like, one-on-one. -on -one no, I, I totally agree with that because, I mean, we do have a lot of concert photographers as well that oh, yeah, yeah. that do listen to, to our podcast. And I think a lot of them, even I've done it in, in the past, where you kind of get caught in that moment. When you're shooting your yeah. first few shows or even if it's a big artist you haven't shot yet, you do get caught up into that moment or they're walking past you just like, oh, yeah, hey, can I get a picture? And they're just like, whoa, whoa, like... Yeah. We've talked about it before on the podcast, just about like keeping it cool, be knowing cool. the time and it's a yeah, time and place for certain for certain stuff and Absolutely. do your job. Yeah, exactly. You're there to exactly. Do your job. Do and your job first. with you, you know, you said you had family in the in the public eye or something. Yeah. Um, I guess how do you how, with this with the celebrity weddings and everything, how do y'all go like how did y'all learn that without like or how do y'all maintain y'all's composure? I know you come from it. What about you? Because you like, said you were really excited with it. <laughs> When she was in the room, so like he's essentially. How did you know not to like fan out? Do my job. I, I just don't want to mess up my job. You know, I'm there for somebody. Else, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, am I gonna get pictures? Of course. Yeah. Am, yeah, am I gonna be like, who cares? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> do you see where we're at right now? You know, you know, I'm gonna do that to her, and we're excited. Yeah, we do that to each other. Yeah. Like, oh my god, she's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we, but we. My goal is to just be invisible. Like. The less you notice me, the better, because I'm not there for you to pay attention to me. I'm there so that you have great pictures once you leave, like once this whole thing is over. So for me, it's just try to be as invisible as possible, like and do the do the least. Like some people do the most. I'm just trying to do the least you in know, terms of me. Michelle Obama, I would have been on. I don't even have Snapchat. I would have been like, I'm gonna download Snapchat. Me and Michelle. Michelle, say what's up. No, <laughs> no, but what I've learned with even doing, uh, you know, just with the people we shot, you know. And not even posting everything, you know, it's just mm -hmm. doing your job well, and they will call you back, you know. Let your photos, let your product do the speaking for you. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's totally. just the approach that I've taken. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys travel a lot for a lot of the work that you do. Um, how is that? You know, as you know, being parents, um, having to take all this equipment with you, pro photos ain't light. Mm -hmm. 
uh, how, what's the process? How do you go about traveling and doing weddings like that? Um, so I'll, I'll just start because I'm going to hand it off to you. Kay. But Karis is a beast at she sh like her next gig should be a travel agent <laughs> <laughs> because she's traveled so much just growing up. She just knows. And I didn't do a lot of traveling. So um, but the principle for us is if we can, we'll don't take the kids. We're, we're not working this hard to leave or not be around our family. Yeah. We wanted to be entrepreneurs. We wanted to work from home so we could be around family. Like when we when we were dating, we were long distance for the longest. So and our only thing that we wanted to do was to be together. God made it possible to where we're now working together and we're together like, like oh. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> pros and cons, more pros than cons. But yeah. uh, so we take that same thing with the kids. So if we can bring the kids when we're traveling somewhere, we do that. But uh, she'll give you the, the details of how we yeah. try to make that happen. So, okay, start from point A. So from point A, when we knew that we wanted to start traveling, what we did was basically say, if you want us to shoot a wedding in your city, all you have to do is pay for our travel. So we weren't actually like charging people for the photography service. We were just saying, pay for our travel, pay for our stay, we'll be there. And you know, we had a set amount of hours and kind of a package like that. Um, now we charge for both the travel and the actual wedding service, but we bundle it up into a flat rate so that it's really simple for everyone. Inside the um, US. Yeah, inside the US. And then we have like an international pricing as well, um, which is, that's not a flat rate, but whatever. Um, now, in terms of bringing kids, we choose when we do and don't bring kids. So for example, we went to Jamaica about a month ago and we made that like an us trip. That was the first time I was away from both kids and it was amazing. But we're going back to Jamaica this month and that's gonna be a family trip. And so we basically decide, okay, which trips are we gonna choose to take a profit from, which is just us going and we make it like a quick trip, two days, we're in and out. And which trip are we gonna call it a wash and say like, this is a paid, family vacation when she says watch they're all profitable you're not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like the margins yeah. we're the talking mar about right. Yeah. Yeah. right 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 um and just say okay we're going to take kids and make this like a family fun trip and so we just make the decisions just based on okay how many are we taking them on how many have we not taken them on like let's figure out have we been traveling a lot and been away from them lately exactly. do we feel yeah. like we just been every weekend shoved them to grandmas or the aunties you know what i mean yeah, so absolutely and it, i mean we also have a great core family group like that we know we can trust them when we're gone you know to be with our kids and so um that's sure. definitely yeah, the kid, you probably have like a look when you guys get an email and it says out of the country or out of you know you're gonna go somewhere you probably have a look you probably like look up from the computer you're like hey and your kids already know oh we going to grandma <laughs> <laughs> they ain't that old yet. but see they love it they oh, love yeah. it no. oh we get to go to Andy's. Oh, okay. Popsicles all day. It's a party. What? My, my people spoil up on it. I'm like, no. Call me. Cause she, no, she can't have that, bro. No, it's not. Please. So you guys are at the caliber now where you're uh, doing a lot of non-African American weddings. Um, could you, you know, give your perspective on, because I'm not saying it's a thing, mm -hmm. but uh, we all have our own cultures mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the ways we, we go about doing things. So could you give a perspective on doing, you know, weddings outside of your own race? Is that, a, is it a difference? Man, is it a, man. Mm -hmm. we just you know, had this conversation, you know, I think, and this is one of those things I'm talking about when, when I asked myself, should I, should I went to Baylor? Should I went to college? Period. That was another intangible. So let me mm -hmm. break it down to you like this. For a while, we couldn't shoot. We couldn't get like people. Yeah. Yeah. Our first wedding was an Asian. Asian woman, white dude. The next one was too white. The next one was black and Hispanic. You know what I mean? So when we started out and we kind of built our brand, it was so diverse. People wouldn't know that we were black if we yeah. didn't put our faces pictures and faces on it. You know what I mean? So um, as we continue to grow, though, that diversity continues to show in our work, I think. you know, So you get what you put out there. Yeah, and it's a pointed effort as well. Like, we don't just throw stuff on our website. Like, if you look at our website, it's very diverse, but it's purposeful. Um, because I know as a bride, when you're going to a planner's website, a photographer's website, you want to see yourself. And so I purposely make sure that we have black couples, that we have interracial couples, that we have white couples, that we have Hispanic couples on the front page and you know in the wedding section on our website so that when a bride is coming to look at our website she sees she can herself. Find herself she can find herself um and so that's not by mistake at all that's a pointed effort just knowing as a bride when i was looking if you know you're a photographer and 
all I saw was white women not to be, you know, biased or whatever, prejudiced, whatever you your want to call it. I want to see myself. Your hair is not blonde. Yeah, yeah and so. I want to know that you can edit my skin color. For sure. And so, um, oh, I recently got hired. The, the exact thing she said out of her mouth was that you handle, you know, darker toned skins really well. Yeah. And her yeah. husband it was uh, is white. And she said that she was worried because she looked at all the photographers mm -hmm. that, you know, that they brought. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know if they're going to have me looking. I was like, I like crazy. real orangey purple. or purple. purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, just, that's a real thing. It's, it's so, yeah, yeah. No, okay. Because uh, no, cause what you just said, like, I never thought about what, what you just said about how, you know, the way you laid out your website is like you, other people see themselves. Yeah. Like that, and I think that's that, that's super interesting because I mean, me, what I did, I just thought, oh, this is a nice picture. This is a nice picture. I bet you they'll like this, they'll like that. Like I never really thought about, I never really thought about that, and that's like that's a very interesting perspective to have oh, when yeah. putting together like a like your yeah, website and your IG is you're going fishing. Mm -hmm. Like, like, yeah, I mean, kind of, of course, I was always trying to like you know show. I was just showing people, oh, look how good my good work, work is, is, but like, I was never like purposeful, intentional. Yeah, like trying strategic. to, like, okay, when they see that picture, are they imagining, like, you know, themselves wearing that dress or looking like this and the lighting, and it's just like, that kind of, that, that's another thing that kind of stuck. Yeah, you throw some, you throw, you throw some gems at me, man. You throw some good gems at me right now. I like this. Like, when you look at their IG, and that's another thing that, you know, came to my mind, I wanted to ask you guys about that. Their IG is super refined, very, you have like a link tree, what is that? Like, you know, like I saw that, I was like, so you pretty much when you click on their link tree, it'll take you to like six different websites that, that yeah. all correspond with them in one place. So when did that happen? When did you guys say, hey, Instagram is a tool and we need to use this and fine tune it and you know, do you guys feel like Instagram is a great tool for your business? For sure, Karis is a beast, she's a beast. So when it comes to like the curation, when it comes to the brand, uh, she runs with it and she does a really good job with it. I, I mean, I, I kind of have my opinions, but at the end of the day, she's been a bride. She is a bride. She's a woman. She know, you know, she can relate and she can feel what our target client feels. You know what I mean? So when it came to our Instagram and all of that, that was all her. And you said that she's a bride and you're, you know, you being a woman, um, how is it being a woman in photography? I know the climate of photography is changing, um, but being a woman and a creative, you know, there's like predisposed notions. Like he's not gonna say it, but he doesn't think uh, women are very technical with the cameras and stuff. No, and, no way, no way, no, I don't think that. Oh, no, I know, wait, no, I know. <laughs> I've been throwing them on other I was like, wait, I was like, wait, what was he saying? No, that is not true. <laughs> I watch YouTube of <laughs> women photographers. They they are, like the stuff they put together is like crazy good. No, I think men suck. So. <laughs> I think we oh, suck. no, no. So like I say men, we have we're very technical. We're like, oh, mm -hmm. put a light here, put a light here, mm -hmm. put a light here, put the light over there. Ha, you shot. <laughs> yeah. The women were like, oh, just do this. Very and graceful. And, oh, that, no, that looks more beautiful. This and I'll look at him like, yo, that is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does your mind work like that? Mm -hmm. You know. So you know, being a woman and you know, in a male-dominated thing, is it a thing for you, or are you just you passed that already? No, I don't think it's a thing for me. I feel like it gives me an advantage, um, just because you know, I don't want to say I speak for all women and like I know what all women are thinking. But like, I think a girl's perspective on your wedding photos, like you want to be pretty, you want to look good, you want to be posed the right way. So like, I, I think for me, sometimes it's as small as like, your finger is too high, like put your, rest your finger on him. Like you're kind of lifting up, relax your shoulders. Like it's just like, just like you were saying just a minute ago, like it's in the details. And I will say, I do not think we will, we would be where we are right now if it wasn't for the teamwork because he is that technical and I am not technical. I am about the person I use natural. I'm like a, a natural light guru. I will say that humbly that I am really good at shooting a natural light, but you don't always have good natural light. And he is there with the technical side with those lights. And we work really well together on me being the, you know, emotive, creative, emotive. the emotive. I want you to feel in this picture and then the edit it really pretty. And he is with, it needs to be lit well, because it's true. I feel like you need both sides. And so as a woman, it has helped me to see what a bride is going to want to see when she looks at her photos of herself on her wedding day. But then also 
those photos can't always be the way that they are if it wouldn't be for the technical side, for the lighting and all that good stuff. Oh, creates a, a, the, the complete customer experience. Exactly. Right? So oh, not only exactly. are they feeling and going through everything, but that needs to be able to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and, and at a high level. Mm -hmm. Uh, posing, you said yeah. you were really good at posing. You, I think, I yeah, believe, yeah, you said you I suck at that. Uh, does it, do you think that is, does that come with you being a woman, or do you think that's just with your creativity? It's, it's or I think it's two sided. Every, I asked, he yeah. has this every episode. Oh, I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna take from A, B, C, and D. I'm gonna, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I do because I, I suck at it, and it, because it happened so recently, where I got stuck in the last wedding we mm -hmm. did, it, it has been bothering me. Like it kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's a nightmare. Not that. Um, <laughs> we have some confidence. Like I, I lost some. I ain't gonna lie. I lost some confidence during this wedding, I, and I say that wholeheartedly because I got stuck. And if it wasn't for the male being just so natural in front of the camera, I probably wouldn't have done. I, I, I don't like the photos. He says they're okay, but I, think they're really I don't. Nice. I didn't like them, and I just didn't like being stuck mm -hmm. and just like feeling like lost during that that moment. But like I said, if it wasn't for him being so animated in front of the camera and just mm -hmm. having a good time and enjoying yeah. his wedding, I probably would have took some horrible photos of him. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious, like, on your process of, of posing and making that subject feel comfortable during yeah. a wedding. Because I think weddings, for me, like I said, they, they frighten me. Like, yeah. a lot. Yeah. I would say it's two-sided. Um, oh. Oh, I would say it's two-sided. I would say one is I have, like, a Rolodex of poses in my head um, that I – have curated over time from seeing pictures, looking in magazines, going on Pinterest, um, looking at other photographers' work that I love. So I have this Rolodex in my head that's like constantly flipping based on the height of the couple, the size of the couple, like certain poses, like a more plus size couple is not going to be able to do. So I'm not gonna make them do that pose if I know they're not gonna look right doing it. So it's kind of like a Rolodex in my head of those. And then the second side of it is knowing people and knowing like, if that guy is a funny guy, like I'm gonna tell him to whisper something in her ear and like, I'm gonna get some candid shots of that. Or like, if she's really goofy, like, all right, y'all just talk for a second and then I'm gonna step back and get them like being who they are. Cause at the end of the day, like, that's my goal. I want y'all to have pictures where you're like, oh, man, I remember that day. Like, I remember what you were saying to mm -hmm. me in that picture. Um, and so I get stuck too though. But when I get stuck, I go back to that Rolodex. Like, I know I have this, you know, these flashcards of poses in the back of my head where if you guys like aren't really doing that much, I know I have these poses I can just go back to. And yeah. And see like Be I'll look and get her brain, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like, we got a course coming soon, posing course. Shameless <laughs> oh, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> in, in Dallas or here? Workshops, but digital. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, well, back to you, like, you know, how you have stuff in your head. Like, I try to study stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you're in high school or college, mm -hmm. when you study a test and come test day, it's all gone. Well, That's how well I make a Pinterest poses. board and make sure that it's like mood up boards on your phone. Type. Yeah, yeah, of like poses, what a, you know, a mood board, whatever, and have it on your phone and say, um, hey, you guys talk for a second. I'm going to get my poses down real quick. Like, it's okay to say that, to make sure that the final product yeah. is what they will enjoy. It's okay if you take 30 seconds. Okay. It's not about you. No, I know it's not about me. That's why I freak out somewhere because it's, it's more about them. I'm, I don't want to mess up their moment. Like, oh, sure, the whole. Sure. All the po photos of me by myself suck. Yeah. I don't, yeah, look, I don't look like just that. Don't make them do something. So uh -huh. like, not yeah. pose them, but make it more like act. Hey, y'all walk towards me. Or just say y'all hug and talk for a second. Yeah. And that will kind of give you a chance to regroup. One time I even said, because I was stuck. I was real <laughs> stuck. I just remember being like, I don't know what to do with y'all. Like, I have no idea. I remember being like, y'all have not had a chance to be by yourselves today. Like, this is your wedding day. It's about the two of you. I'm going to give you guys 45 seconds to just like talk, like enjoy that y'all are married. And I went, I just walked around the corner and was like, oh no, what am I doing? Like getting on Pinterest and trying to figure it out. But like, they don't need to know that you're stressing. And like, there's a way to do it to where you can still, you know, let them have a nice quiet moment of like just the two of them where nobody's why you go distracted figure and why you go regroup yeah. and figure out Freaking what you're out. doing. <laughs> yeah. Sweating bullets. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 Hands shaking, <laughs> trying to look at your phone for poses. Yeah, but. You okay, Freddie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right over there, guys. Just I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so Do you have? I have no. one more question for okay. me. No roll. So one thing that because y'all, you keep saying he's business. You're creative. Mm -hmm. 
outside of photography? Do you pitch him creative ideas? Like, hey, I have this idea. You're the business guy. How can this work? And are you like, hey, I have this business. Can you throw some creativity in there? Like, do you have other ideas floating? All the time. I mean, all day, every day. All the time. That's what we, I mean, you do that for fun. Like, oh, what can we do? What else, what's next? You know, I'm always, what's next, you know? Yeah. Uh, exit straight. A beginning, how are we going to get in and how are we going to get out, you know? So. Because I'm not trying to work on my life. Exactly. 12 weddings a year. I, I listen to yeah. this podcast and they say, <laughs> it's, it's fire. Uh, have y'all heard that terminology? Because you don't want to work on your life. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. Okay. <laughs> I'm a labor. I don't have friends, so I listen to podcasts. <laughs> no, I mean, yo, I think we do that all the time. It's very, because I'm very creative, and I may not know always how to get to the end goal that I'm seeing in my head, or like, I just want to do this and be creative. But, and, and he's the, like, but we can make money doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a really good The thing about it, though, is, yes, she's creative, but she thinks entrepreneurially, which is amazing, right? So, and then, yes, I'm more so business, but I'm creative, and you got to be creative when you're an entrepreneur. you got to be creative in figuring out ways how to bring something to the market or, at the end of the day, service others and help others. you got to be creative when you are a business-minded person. So, it, it just meshes so well, you know, and day by day, as we continue this journey, we just realize things like, oh, man. We were we had to be destined to be together yeah. because the way that you're thinking the way I mean it's crazy. No, but you yes. guys have an amazing from sitting here. You guys have a great dynamic. Really, it's really yes. awesome. Um, Mike, you mentioned so earlier because we you know, like I said before we take breaks. You mentioned something about college earlier, or you I dropped out. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> um, now you said something. You, know, you said mm-hmm. to. That creatives should go to creative schools. Kind of schools mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, just what I was saying over the break was, I love Baylor. I love the experience that I had when I chose Baylor. I chose it because I wanted a college experience. Um, but although I did get that college experience, I love college. College was great. I just didn't like school. <laughs> um, and so, although I did get that college experience, I feel like it would have benefited me more to go to a school with people who thought like I did, mm-hmm. um, and you know, not any down on Baylor at all, great school. Um, but it, it lacked truly creatively driven people um, who wanted to be in a creative industry, um, into creative industries. And so I think that if you're creative and if you know that you want to do something in the creative field, like go to a creative school, network with creative people. Um, yeah. And I, I really think that, I mean, I will go back and finish school for my mom and my grandparents. Um, at some point, <laughs> he's looking at me, but I will go back and do it just for the principle of having, you know, the privilege of getting an education. Um, but I really think that had I done it over again, I don't know if I would, I don't know. That's it's, it's a, a tough question. To regrets, but I, I barely remember college because I was having a good time. <laughs> so, uh, it was fun. It was Ooh, fun. It was fun. So but like in a sense, it's like an untapped market because yeah. you, since you're the only creative there, that they come to you now. Like, Absolutely. It's like the whole photography thing. And I think thing. It, and, and on playing devil's advocate, it's also good because it also taught you a little structure. If you were just yeah. uh, off the wall creative, you got to have the structure mm-hmm. to be able to make sure you're meeting deadlines. The, mm-hmm. You know, for client, if you're yeah. a business, you know what I mean. There has to be some type of structure. I just. Again, I think that's why we mesh so well. We were able to bring mm-hmm. that together. But for creatives going in college, make the most out of that. Learn the things that you may not be so great at automatically, yeah. you know, but also still feed your strengths and, you know, and uh, continue to level up in that area. But if you're in college and you're creative, make sure that you're learning, you know, your marketing principles, all the discipline that it takes and all that type of stuff to be a successful business with your art. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm kind of pausing because he's been asking a bunch of personal I'm questions. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm done. I'm done with the with, with the questions. Like I said, I'm not going. On. I I know if I sit here and think, I'll probably come up with a whole bunch of questions. But I don't want to keep y'all's time. And I know mm-hmm. we got all our guys over here too. Uh, Appreciate yeah, the whole crew. No, I, I'm good. I think you've given us a lot of amazing perspective. Um, I know you did. She always shines when the camera's on. <laughs> and in person, I'm like, yeah. I'm off the wall. Oh, yeah. 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 No, as soon as this cuts off, I'm... <laughs> I'm so tired, God. No. That's good, baby. No, we definitely appreciate y'all. For Thank real. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate much. y'all. Best of luck in everything that y'all do. Same, same. same. Thanks for sure. having us. It was yeah. fun, for sure. I'm going to do this, the corny outro. <laughs> I do it every time. Uh, hey, guys.
It's Fred. Thanks for tuning in to the Not So Cool Podcast, where we make not being cool, cool. <laughs> you, I think you do a good job at it. You want to give it a try? What is it? Let's see, let's see the outro. Say it again. Hey, hey, this is your boy Jay Ferris. No, I'm <laughs> 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 Uh, thanks for tuning into the Not So Cool podcast where we make not being cool cool. Am I, am I saying this is Fred or am I saying? No, you, no, okay. no it's you. Because <laughs> you, you have a good voice so far. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, this is Joshua and Karis Ferris with Ferris Photography. Thanks for tuning in to the Not So Cool podcast where we make not being cool cool. Hey. <laughs> we we'll cut that because that was too good. <laughs> <laughs>